Good afternoon, my name is Julie Hudson, I'm the ward manager of Cherry Ward at Highbury Hospital. We've been asked to take part in the MESOC Partnership Day um, and talk about teamwork and we'd like to discuss with you, to you, with you about um, the trauma-informed care project um, and what that's meant for us as a team. Um, so we've been working through the project for over a year now and um, it looks at um, not what's wrong with somebody when they're brought into hospital but actually um, what's happened to them um, and how we can help them. Uh, it looks at the environment, safety, interventions, um, choice and also um, models of care and how we can support people on their discharge from the hospital. Um, as you see, we've got five other members of the team here, all different um, roles, and I thought it'd be good that we discuss what we wanted to do as um, a ward and how we all felt about that. Uh, so one of the things as a ward manager I wanted to look at was the environment and how we could make that better because at the moment there isn't a lot of um, communal space on the ward and we do end up having to share patient areas to do MDTs so we've looked at um, having a specific MDT room um, and also making the staff room better than what it is because um, it's not a particularly nice place for staff to be right now um, a lot of patient um, and doctor conversations and examinations are uh, take place behind curtains, which, which isn't really the best place. So we've looked at how we can adapt the uh, clinic room and maybe get a couch in there so it's more of a private area. Um, also, we wanted to look at um, HCAs and the role on the ward um, because often they spend so much more time with the patients than what the nurses do. Um, so we've looked at how we can bring HCAs into the MDTs um, because they're often able to tell us a lot more about patients and also to offer HCAs um, key worker days. We have the name nurse days for the nurse, name nurses and we just thought it'd be really good for HCAs to also be able to spend time with individual patients to help build relationships and, and trust. Uh, we're using the All About Me's to work through the care plans and um, we also want to bring them through the triangle of care and work with families and uh, patients and uh, also um, eventually we want to be able to look at the re recovery model mm -hmm. and further training for staff around distress signature training. Mm -hmm. So we're just going to drop guys, does anybody want to go first and talk about what trauma enforcement for you? Okay. For me, it means taking, thinking about the individual, uh, taking the individual's trauma into account, uh, their experiences, uh, making sure that we avoid triggering traumatic reactions, um, adjusting staff behaviour, thinking about how they can change the way they ask questions, be confident in supporting the individuals to cope, and allowing patients to manage their own symptoms, assisting them to access and benefit from our service, making them feel safe, making them feel that they can trust us, and making sure their choices are prioritised and they're healthy. Encouraging input from everyone involved in the care, uh, in building on decisions and collaborative relationships, recognising strengths and weaknesses um, to maximise their empowerment, and um, thinking about staff's well being on education and development. Yeah. 
Um, since completing the trauma informed care, um, I've noticed that as a team, a lot more people are talking about patient or staff trauma. <coughs> Sorry, and asking questions to understand more instead of talking about something that's really personal to a patient and is not really known how to react to it or what's the right thing to say. Um, so I've also noticed the that since gaining the confidence and talking in that conversation, I've also created a lot of trust. Uh, or gained a lot of trust from our patients, and they appreciate that they can allow us to pass on this information to all the services if needed. And so we keep reliving that trauma. So we see they can talk to other people a lot more better than probably what we can do with other people. Uh, and as a HCA, I felt a lot more empowered in my job role because I feel like it's involved. I'm a lot more involved in my patients' care with their trauma and creating a tr trustworthy bond uh, instead of just leaving the background aside to the nurses and the doctors. Um, and also, the nurses put a lot more trust into the HCAs to go and have their conversations with the patients. Um, and I also believe that the trauma and informed care has come at the right time, uh, especially with the pandemic, because we've had to help a lot of people uh, with the patient, like with their trauma, with the family, for example, if they've passed away and they've been in the hospital, they've not been able to go see them, um, or the family not just being there in general with the restrictions, um, or even just socialising, and it's had a massive impact on people's lives. Um, we've not just been the carers um, to look after them, like we've had to become their family as well as doing our job. Um, and so I think that's really helped uh, because we can all kind of relate to each other, we're all kind of going through it at the same time. And I think it's made the patients feel a little bit better that we've all got each other, uh, as soppy as it sounds. <laughs> but, but yeah. Anybody else to share? Um, I just think, um, I personally feel since completing the training in trauma informed care, um, I, I personally have more understanding of what um, trauma actually is. Um, I think as a team we're able to work more effectively um, delivering like, more person centred care with um, empathy, compassion, and understanding. Um, I think we're also able to work with our patients. Um, Helping them to identify potential triggers that without we traumatizing them. Uh, and I think we've got in a sort of um, increase the confidence, self esteem, and sense of well being. Brilliant. Karen, how have you found it? I know you often tucked away in the kitchen, aren't you? Yeah, yeah, I enjoy the um, training. Um, feel that we can help our patients by developing a more healthy way of coping with their trauma, like sitting and chatting to them if they want to chat and sharing things with us and you know just trying to like, help them by listening to help increase their self of wellness and self esteem um, and understand and work through their problems and, and help them the best that we can. You've had, had some really good relationships though, haven't you, with some yeah. patients, yeah, yes. so. Yeah, yeah, I really like to get involved and help them the best I can, even if it's just making them a cup of tea and taking them a biscuit. You know, if they don't want to talk, I just sit with them and, and just be there. It's a little bit of company for them, and sometimes I've said, you know, it's made them feel better, and come and spend, come and spend 10 minutes with me. And um, you know, it makes me feel good that I've made them feel good. Yeah. Sometimes that's all it takes, isn't it? Yeah. A little bit of time. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, yeah. Hey, do you go in your time? Uh, I was just going to say that since doing the training, I've got a better understanding of, of things that I've had experienced, whether it was a long time ago or quite recent, or is currently going through trauma. Um, I have better knowledge around trauma as well, so yes, yeah, sometimes if I see maybe a patient is, isn't in a good mood or they're upset or angry, I now know 
the reasons more behind that, why they might be acting that way, and whether it means I can sit, ask them if they're all right and listen, or like I said, which is making them a cup of tea, or just actually listening to the reasons why they might be upset. And obviously, everything we've learned about trauma, it, it kind of all starts to make sense when they tell me things that are wrong with them or things that have happened in the past. So it's nice to be able to have a better understanding of the individuals on the board and maybe help them in, even if it's just a little well. Just make the day maybe a little bit better or just let things get up, get things off the chest. Yeah. I think it's really important to be able to have that one to one for the patient as well because especially with mental health, if somebody's having a bad day and they're shouting and they're really angry towards you and stuff, Sometimes it's really hard not to take it personal, but obviously when you have those kind of conversations you can kind of relate where it is coming from, it kind of brings you back onto planet Earth really, because you kind of really, sometimes you can forget that. Because obviously we can have bad days ourselves as well. Um, so having that and being able to talk to them about it instead of like shying away and stuff, it is, makes it a lot easier. Do you think the trauma informed projects helped maybe staff realise, you know, what what kind of effect trauma can have on them and what it looks like for them? Because I think a lot of people in the past have seen it as though it's part and parcel of your job. Mm. And you know I feel like I'm doing more than just my job. Mm. Since doing it. Like in a good way, because it's like I feel like it's not just come to work. Do your job and you go, and there's all the other feelings and everything else getting involved, yeah. like with the trust and like even with, like what Cameron says, like it made her day, like stuff like that. You go home and you feel really good. You think, you know what? I love my job. Mm. Just some little bits like that, um, and that's like kind of relates to the thought of like you're saying that sometimes you forget because. It is quite hard, especially like with the COVID and everything, that's not been easy, so it's been very stressful. So obviously having all that and then coming to work and making it a lot more of a nice place instead of just coming into work. Uh, and I think with staff as well, like you, you, you got that bond with staff a little bit more because you can talk to each other or it's like if somebody if a patient says something really upsetting to me, I know that I could go for, to like Karen, for example, and we could just like discuss it together instead of. Well, I, 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 yeah, exactly. And that's what we like, even when I was saying it before, like, I know it sounds quite soft, but we are, we are all like family, and I think the patients are involved in that as well. Mm -hmm. um, and it is really important as well. Because I don't feel like if I was having a bad day, that I would be able to come to work and not talk to anybody about it. I do feel like I could approach people. And just having that is really nice. Yeah. Yeah. And I think the, the staff are more, um, I think it's it's kind of an automatic thing now that they kind of get together after any incidents and mm -hmm. things like it and discuss it. And, yeah. Yeah. Don't you think each other is more of the team? I think like Ellie said, it's kind of happened at the right time, it's not the right, the worst time, but at the right time, yeah. in the sense that uh, obviously we worked through the, the whole of the pandemic, and you know, the law at some point felt that we're having a bad day, and you know, stressed and, you know, all these you know, the emotions that we've had to experience. We've had to scale with it, do you know what I mean? And it's been good that we have been there as a team to help to support each other. <coughs> we also have support from the and the training involved and the Yeah. Yeah. I'm just saying, I think the debriefing automatic it's just part and parcel of what we do now, isn't it? Yeah. And I think the staff who might not have really understood or taken part in in the formulations, the psychological formulations, um, they tend to want to go in there and do that now, don't they? Because it's it's they understand why it's so important and why it helps um, us as a team help the patient. So yeah, I, mean, I think we've still got the way to go, haven't we? We've still got the recovery model and stuff to, to get top of and we want to be dealing with the distress signature training. Um, there's plenty of other training that we, you know, we can do, do yet yeah, as a team, so, but yeah. Yeah. So, just a little discussion from us on Cherry Ward.
from Julie. Paige. Karen. Karen. Jordan. Bye. Bye.